You can't wait for Big Slick anymore. You're down to three players. You got to push it around. All these guys know it. Well, you're right, Vince. That's tournament poker. You just cannot wait for the best hand to get your money in there all the time. The pros know it, and Shauna Hyatt got them to tell us why. Thanks, Mike. The majority of poker players understand how to play the game, but they don't fully appreciate how tournament poker is different. It's time again for another WPT Poker Corner. I've done a lot of gambling in my life, but tournaments are different. In a regular live game, you can be conservative by waiting forever to get the great hands. It's boring, but it's certainly less of a gamble. In tournaments, you don't have that luxury. Sometimes being too disciplined makes you a target. Remember that the blinds and antes keep skimming away at your stack. Okay, the price of over just gone up. Blinds, fifteen hundred. Three blinds are now two and four thousand. The blinds have gone up to three and six thousand. Lemma is going up now. Five four and ten thousand dollar blinds. Twelve thousand dollars. When they raise up every hour, that means they eat away at you even more. Jamie, he's been playing a long, long time, so he knows that you can't sit there. If the antes goes up, he knows you got to move the chips. I start playing reckless like Don Luis. If you try to wait around for aces, you'll run out of money. The size of your stack dictates your play. All in. When you have a lot of chips, you can afford to be patient. When you're short stacked, you've got to gamble. Of course, you always adjust your game to your chips, to your table position, and also, of course, to the players, what, you, what you're playing against. That's part of the game. Can't give up just because you're low on chips. You gotta go in and try to get some chip, you know? You gotta make moves now. You just can't sit back and worry you're gonna get knocked down. Hey, if you're not willing to take a chance, maybe you should switch to checkers. All right, this time Jamie's going to be first to speak. You know, here he goes again. Look at this. Again, he's all in. He is not going to be milk toast here. He is actually trying to win this tournament. He's banging his chips out there to get back in the hunt with these guys. He is going to catch up quick if he continues to win these blinds and annies. Look at Jamie's very happy. He's laughing. You ever notice how a player, when you're winning, Everything seems really funny. You laugh, you're making jokes, telling jokes. Yeah, everything's funny when you got plenty of money, Vince. <laughs> well, he's playing great, real aggressive, which you have to be when you're down to three hands. Three handed poker, you have to be real aggressive. It's paying off for him. The action is on Jose here. He picks up an ace do soft suit on the button. And he's going to raise it. Sure, why not? Luis folds. Now, Jose made a very nice raise there, in my opinion. He doubled the blind. Uh, Jamie just has a seven Jose jack of spades. Interesting hand. A callable hand. Now, he just bluffed the last few hands. What's he going to do with this? Is he, this guy likes to bluff and not call. Well, notice that he's a little bit leery because the raise was just doubled, which Jamie indicates some strength him. sometimes. Yeah, he's not going to call. He throws his hand away. Jose nice play by Jose there. I really like that raise. This will be the last well, he had ace high. Like we said before, he makes his own luck. I mean, he does mix it up real well. I tell you, Vince, this guy is playing great today. He's playing like a champion, no question about it. Luis is in position on the button. Price of poker's gone up. Jamie's been on a nice little roll here lately. Just like Dave said. And Luis, the action is on him. Okay, now he's just picked up a pretty good hand. Ten ace, he's going all in. All in, no holding back. Jamie folds, and Jose quickly says, Cole, he's got two kings in the pocket. The dream hand, he calls him. Oh, my, he's got the two kings in his hand. Two cowboys, whatever you want to call them. That is a huge blow to Luis. He's a big favorite right now. Ace-10 against pocket kings. It's ace-10 against pocket kings. He needs a miracle outdraw. And he got it, Vince. Oh, he oh, has got it. It come 10-10, Jack. Look at Luis, look. Luis, the casino <laughs> owner, has just hit three of a car with an ace. It is a miracle draw. Whoa, he's he hit. cannot believe it. Neither can the crowd. He's made 30 miles, but it's not over. Jose's dejected. He can still catch a king to win this pot, though. Oh, man. Jose is sick about this. Look at Luis. Oh, no. A king. Look at this. Can you believe it? Look at Luis. Look. Look at him. He's hollering at the deal. How can you do that to me? Miracle upon miracle. In the meantime, Jose is excited. He has made kings full. Luis is going to have to catch a 10 to win this pot now. He said, look, give me my 10. You gave him his king. 
This is absolutely ridiculous. Can he catch the one card out of the deck? It would have to be a 10 to stay alive. What an amazing pot. Luis moves all in. He gets called by Kings. It's going to be a 10. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Nine. <laughs> He's not going to do it. Luis is out of this tournament. Luis the gunslinger has blazed his last bullets in this tournament. Oh, I have never seen a hand like that. Now that was exciting, Vince. That is poker. That was agony to ecstasy and the turn of a card. And Louise, the look on his face when he caught the 10, he looked to the crowd. It was a beautiful thing. There was so much love in this room. And in seconds later, Wait. turned around so quickly. Well, Jose, go through his emotions. Think about his emotions. So dejected, you see your opponent flop three tens when he got two kings, and then a king to come off, where now you're ecstatic again. Unbelievable, dramatic action here on the World Poker Tour. Well, it's a dream flop. You got two kings, first of all, before the flop. How do you pick up two kings three-handed? <laughs> Luis, Luis goes out, he staggers next to the pole out there. Well, he's been lucky all tournament. He thought it was going to continue. He's a little punch drunk right here after that hand. He's walking into walls back there. Had he not caught the tens, you know, it wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have felt the pain that he's feeling right now. But he had him for a second there. He had the pot won. And the tournament in his pocket virtually had he won that pot. And for an instant, he thought he had done it. Oh, man, he's stunned. He's going to probably have to walk down to the safe and put his hands through all the extra money he has, the casino, to get over this because <laughs> this is a tough, tough beat. Well, he did take home $25,120 to add to that safe, but I know it was the title was all he cared about. We are down to our final two players in Costa Rica. Who will take home this title? Don't miss the exciting conclusion of the Costa Rica Classic on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to San Jose, Costa Rica, and the Casinos Europa Costa Rica Classic. I'm Vince Van Patten. And I'm Mike Sexton. And Vince, would you look at this? As a tradition on the World Poker Tour, this. all the tournaments bring in the prize money in some inordinate fashion. But I believe this is going to be hard to top right here in Costa Rica. Look at this. The oxen are coming. You know, in Spain, they run with the bulls. In Costa Rica, you walk with the oxen. Here comes the cash, look at this. Cash right on the tabletop. Our beautiful host, Shauna Hyatt, is putting all the cash on the table, stacking it beautifully. Well, this is quite a scene, look at this. They're bringing the money, they're dumping it out, it's coming to baskets. Now Luis, who finished third, has now come out to dump the prize money on the table. Hey, he's throwing the money into the crowd. He doesn't care anymore, because it's not his. <laughs> Well, Vince, this is it. The two Costa Ricans have come down for the heads-up battle of the duel in the jungle. Absolutely. It's mano a mano. It's a street fight, a gunfight at the OK Corral. These guys are going out. Now, don't forget, Jose has over 300,000 worth of chips, and Jamie just doesn't have that many chips. He's got to play real fast at this point. Now, even though there's only a $60,000 difference between first and second, it's the prestige of winning this title. Jamie's not messing around. He's going all in right here on the first hand. Yeah, absolutely right. He has an ace-10. He's got a big hand here. Jose's got a decision. Now, Jose said to count it. So that means he's going to contemplate calling, even though he's got a king-five off suit here. Look at this look. He's trying to detect yeah. something, and, and Jamie Gimson, just comes back yeah. and says, what, what do you want to know? Yeah. You know? What are you looking at me for? You're the big fish here. He looks back at his hand. He knows he's getting, there's 57,000 in the pot, cost him 37,000 to call, but he knows he's got a chance to take the man out if he gets lucky and wins this pot. He doesn't know the king's not the best hand. It's a tough decision right here. He's got the chips where he can afford to make this call. 
But do you really want to double your opponent up? He's calling he it. He is calling it. He does it. it. Okay. He's going for the gusto right here. He's going for it all. The title here. The shot at the Bellagio Championship worth millions. What's going to happen? Now, Jamie stands up. He prays. He closes his eyes. Look. He loves it. He knows right now he's in position where he can double up. A stack of chips just, uh, cash just fell out on the table. They don't know where to put it anymore. It's uh, tons of money on the table here. Uh, over a quarter of a million. Here's a flop. Nine, nine, three. So, Jamie. Now, Jamie likes that because that doesn't help Jose. Jose sits back down. The ace 10 is still in front at this point. The six comes off. Jose needs to catch a king or a five. Jamie's not sitting down till, this, till he wins this pot. A deuce comes off. Jamie's going to stay alive. Well done with the ace 10. He's excited. He's doubled up. He's feeling good. Now, Jose is probably saying to himself, geez, I wish I hadn't called that right there. I could have saved that 37,000. Okay. On the other hand, he went forward. He tried to take him out. He still has a two and a half to one chip lead, so he's in a commanding position. However, his opponent now has a spark of confidence. Look at the great Doyle Brunson, the great poker player. Played with 10 deuce in wins tournaments. Why not a king five? I mean, you could win with that. Hey, it was a tough decision for him right there. You know, he had the chips where he could make that call. On the other hand, do you want to double the, your opponent up? You know, what would you viewers have done? What would you have done had you been in that seat with a king five? Would you have called? Would you have thrown your cards away? That's the beauty of the World Poker Tour. You get to make these decisions right along with these great players. And now, even though Jose had a commanding chip lead when they're playing heads up, Jamie just doubled up. You're right. Absolutely right. But things can change quickly. It's going to be up to Jose to act first. He looks at a 9-10 in his hand. He's in position, and he calls. Now, Jamie has a queen-6. Nothing spectacular at this point. Let's see the flop. Flop comes king-queen-5. Okay, now this is interesting. Jose... As a 9, 10, queen, king, nothing. But Jamie has a pair of queens with a six high. Look at this. Jose is betting. Jamie's going to throw the queens away. I don't get this, Mike. Well, that's a pretty amazing play. Jose bet with a belly buster straight draw. That was all he had. He didn't take the free card off there. He opted to bet. And Jamie folded the second pair. Now, that's bizarre to me. Now, Vince, i got to tell you, a lot of players would not have bet that 9-10 there. They'd have tried to get the free card to make the straight. You have to admire Jose for betting there and earning that pot. Well, we've been seeing him do that all night long here. He does play really aggressive. He sensed a little weakness. And I still can't believe that Jamie just threw those, those queens away and so quickly. Okay, Jamie's on the button here. Okay, he's picked up a big hand. He's got ace-10, and he is raising strong. He's moved all in, and look at Jose. He's picked up two jacks. He says, I call very quickly. This is what it comes down to, this kind of hand. We're going to see a huge battle here. This is ace-10 versus two jacks. This is the exact same hand that Luis went out on in ace-10. Let's see if Jose can do it again. Two jacks against ace-10. Jose's about a two-and-a-half to one favorite. If he holds up, he'll be our champion. Here's, Here's a flop. flop. A four and a seven. <laughs> Having trouble getting that third card out, but it's a six. It is not a help for Jamie at this point. The Jacks are in front at this point. Okay. Fourth Street, no. The atmosphere is electric, Vince. One more card. We could have a champion. If a three or eight comes off, notice they'll split the pot. Jamie will need an ace to win this pot. Can he get this ace? They're going to burn, and they're going to turn. He needs an ace. No. No, it's a deuce. Jose knows he's done it. What a great moment for Jose Rosencrantz. He's played fantastic poker. The crowd goes crazy. Jose cheers. He's hugging everybody. A fantastic performance today by Jose Rosencrantz. He picked up some big hands. He made some great plays. This is a great moment for Jose. Very thrilling. To Jose Rosencrantz, the Costa Rica Classic Champion, the pride of Costa Rica tonight. I'm Mike Sexton, thanking all of you for joining us at the Costa Rica Classic, and we look forward to seeing you again on the World Poker Tour.